feminist struggle and feminist movement as really key for trans people on so many different levels. And a really big one is I think a lot of the language and ways that we as trans people kind of understand being in movement together is specifically indebted to feminism. Uh, a really good example I think is healthcare, right? That, that there is this really clear lineage of 70s second wave feminist organizing around accessing healthcare in ways uh, that are rooted in self-determination, autonomy, self-knowledge and self-control over one's own body, and building collective values of mutual respect. And, uh, and that being the driving core of the right to healthcare. And feminists, I mean, second wave, 70s feminist movements just did extraordinary work of advancing this progressive liberatory vision of women's health care and in the process actually successfully putting pressure on a lot of medical institutions to take women's bodies and health care makes a lot more seriously than they had before and that provided a lot of the foundation for the AIDS movements in the 80s that continued to have the, and developed a revolutionary vision around healthcare access uh, that in the case of AIDS movements extended to drug research, extended to like how pharmaceuticals were developed and issued, extended to the large scale allocation of resources in the medical research. You know, the, this whole scope of issues that feminist healthcare movements had not really successfully taken on, um, but continued the driving themes of feminist healthcare work about self-determination, self-knowledge and communities of respect being the foundation for adequate health, or for securing right to respectful and adequate health care. And, and I think that that's very much, you know, trans communities, particularly as they evolved in the late 80s and 90s, really come out of that legacy of AIDS movements and feminist movements. Uh, our sort of shared values around trans people have a right to adequate health care, uh, trans people have a right to health care that's specific to our needs to transition and that the entire edifice of like experts to manage and limit access to that is deeply problematic and that we have a right to reform medical institutions in a way that actually meets our needs uh, and that that's coupled to like challenging racism and challenging uh, the violence against poor people and I mean coupled to a whole host of other deeply related obstacles to adequate health care. And so this whole sort of trans movement around health care really owes a lot to feminist organizing in the 70s. Uh, and I don't think health care is the only issue. Like I think a lot about how trans people understand the work that we're doing um, in trans liberation uh, comes out of political concepts that were evolved by second wave feminism in the 70s and that that's that's one of our histories and one of our legacies and a legacy that's really I think ignored a lot because of the really overt transphobia that was present in second wave feminism you know Janice Raymond and Andrew Dworkin and uh, I mean these folks who uh, you know didn't hold trans women in particularly high regard and that a lot of sort of how you know we understand the sort of gender wars of the 80s was sort of challenging the transphobia and anti-sex worker bias and anti-kink bias sort of that was prevalent in certain dominant forms of 70s lesbian feminism. I mean, I think there's a certain kind of sexual cachet associated with young, genderqueer, transmasculine people these days that's sort of rapidly realigning feminist women-centered politics because um, everyone's hot partners are transitioning, um, but the, the legacy of trans women in some ways is very different and the trans women have both kind of played a core driving part of the feminist movement for a long time and have been uh, the unrelenting uh, target of hostility. My recently ex-girlfriend spent a lot of time in a very bitter trans inclusion fight in the women in trans play party scene, king scene here in New York, that centered around policies, a policy of the lesbian sex mafia, uh, which is, you know, the oldest women's kink organization around and founded by Dorothy Allison and Joe Ramon and a really incredible legacy. 
and uh, the lesbian sex mafia had a policy dictating the, uh, uh, how much trans women could undress in, that, in, in an environment where everyone is having sex and having sex often that with intense themes of violence and domination and whatnot that like naked trans women could be too triggering. <laughs> um, and so this really deeply transphobic policy uh, uh, and a really, you know, horrific battle around changing it. I mean, a battle that led some radical feminists to come to our home and scream at us, you know, and other things. Uh, I, so that's real. Um, I, I don't really care that much about it. I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm really proud of my girlfriend's work and, you know, I have a lot of friends that work on camp trends and whatnot. And there are women's lives on the line. I mean, not, like, whether we can get into Michigan or not in of itself is totally irrelevant, but Michigan provides a sort of in, in, uh, inspired model for women's institutions all over the country. And then in many cases, feminists have done a really good job of building emergency support services for women in, for example, domestic violence, uh, abusive relationships and trans women who are you know extremely vulnerable to, to relationship abuse and have a uh, are excluded from most of the services out there or frequently end up being really grossly mistreated and excluded from women centered feminist support services but that you know even with those conflicts and even with that you know those very painful legacies that are very real today in places like Michigan and you know, ongoing battles about trans inclusion in women's institutions, that we still, that it's really worth it for trans people to count ourselves uh, as being children of a feminist movement and to continue to learn from feminist movement and to continue to be committed to feminist principles. Uh, yeah.